Now it was essential that Jesus took this humility because if he was going to qualify as a human savior, a human high priest, he had to live totally in the boundaries of humanity if he was to be a savior for humans. So you interview Jesus. Jesus, how are you doing this uh, significant downgrade of being human here for 33 years, although he's human forever? How are you handling this? Is it like really hard to get used to? Jesus would have said, the humility that's necessary, because he had to live in these restraints in order to qualify as a human savior for us. A human high priest. Jesus would have said, it doesn't make any difference to me. My humility was in place from eternity. I don't get my identity from my power before people. My identity is in humility and love. It's not in what the people do. It's not in how they respond to me. Paragraph D. In denying himself of these privileges by being a servant, he did not deny his true identity, but rather he was actually being true to himself. When he was a servant, it was not an exterior role, I mean a foreign role. It wasn't a, a foreign garment he was putting on. When he was a servant, he was totally at home, and he was true to his true self, his core identity. Because he was a servant in eternity past, and when he's the king over the earth in the millennial kingdom, openly seen as king, he will be 100% a servant. He will be the same. Paragraph E, Isaiah 53. This is an interesting one. He has no form, no comeliness, that when they see him, there's no beauty, that we should desire him. He is despised, rejected. We don't esteem him. Paragraph E, Jesus emptied himself of his reputation in the eyes of men. Because he embraced this lifestyle of a servant as a man in order to greatly enhance us, he had to do it to enhance us because he could not have saved us if he didn't live in the constraints of humanity. Because he had to be an, a human offering for sin. He had to be human to do it. He had to keep the rules, so to speak, stay inside the boundary lines of humanity if he was going to be a human savior. That was no problem to him. Because his core identity was humility and love. So as he's embracing this lifestyle, every single person who met him, everybody, no exception, his mother, father, no exception, everyone greatly underestimated him and they underestimated his abilities. When he's 20 years old in the neighborhood, not one human being has any idea how superior his intellect and his abilities are. He has no need to show them to garner a response that would enhance his life and make him better. He says, I have no need to show how unique and how superior. It's the opposite of us. We get our identity by recognition of people. We go out of our way to show how unique and superior we are. We work overtime to prove we have more than everybody else has. Here's Jesus, 20 years old, walking through town. Far more intelligent, far more powerful, far more gifted than his closest companions ever knew. Even the 12 apostles never knew. You know, when Jesus visits John on the island of Patmos 60 years later, 70 years later, John, who knew Jesus the best, falls like a dead man. He looks at Jesus, ah! And Jesus says, oh, you didn't really know me that well, did you? He goes, I had no idea you were this level. He goes, I'm way beyond this. But think, nobody knew how superior, nobody knew how, dis, no one distinguished him. He appeared ordinary with no special form. It meant he had no status in society. He had no comeliness. He had no specific attraction that made anybody turn their head and notice him. And he was completely at peace in his spirit and completely successful in his home. Now that's an identity based in God. 
He's the example. Paragraph F. We'll just do one or two paragraphs more and we'll bring this to an end. What was more important, most important to Jesus was to tell the Father's story, to make the Father known, and to enrich our lives by dying for us. He was absolutely preoccupied making the Father known and enriching your life. Yeah, but what kind of applause did you get? Even his main guys denied him, and then at the resurrection, they didn't even believe he rose from the dead. When Mary Magdalene said he rose, they go, no way, he didn't rise. His main guys, did they, they, they didn't buy it. If his core identity was in having power, if that would have been his core identity, having power over people, then the incarnation would have been a denial of his true self. When he became a man, he didn't deny his true self. His identity was in love and humility, not in showing his power. He shows his power in order to accomplish the will of God, but it does not enhance who he is. I'm just guessing. When I think about Jesus, I don't think Jesus, when he walked around the earth, said, Oh, boy, do I have power. I mean, he did Genesis 1. I believe when he walked around the earth, he thought, Oh, how I love to love. I mean, it's like if you met a little baby, you know, a little infant. You get right up next to him. Okay, little guy, let's arm wrestle right now, you and me. Come on, put it right there. You know, little, uh, can he get his arm up? Okay, forget the arm wrestling. I want to show you my superior power. Okay, let's get, bring the chessboard out right now. I'm going to set you in your place. Little guy, look up, just spit, you know. When an adult sees a little baby, they don't go, wow, do I have power over you. A little adult sees a baby, they go, wow, do I love you. When Jesus was among his people, he wasn't thinking how to wow them. He thought, I love them. He had so much more power that wasn't even an issue. It wasn't even a point. People were always trying to get him to, to prove his power. He'd be like, that's like arm wrestling a baby. I don't need, I'm so superior. There's no point in it. Play chess with that little baby. Now, when you see a baby, you don't think, wow, do I got power. You think, wow, do I love you. Wow, do I feel for you. I want to make your life strong. You look at the little baby that you love. That's His identity was not in his power. His identity was in his love. That's where he lived. Paragraph G. Jesus didn't serve to prove something, but when he served, he expressed the truth of who he was. He was so comfortable washing the feet of the disciples there was nothing ungodlike at all about washing feet he was true to himself he had that same heart a billion years ago and a billion years from now he will always love washing feet it's what he's like because his identity is is in the right place and the lord says to us love me with all of your soul Establish your identity in your relationship with me, and you will love me with so much more clarity and depth. Amen. Let's stand. I'm just picturing... One of you guys go to that little baby and say, come on, let's arm wrestle. You and me, one-on-one, -on -one, right now. Let's get it on record.